Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and we're continuing looking at embedded system design, specifically data movement instructions. And now what we're going to do is look at the second addressing mode supported on the MSP430, which is called immediate mode addressing. So in immediate mode addressing, you are going to provide a constant value that is moved into the destination. Okay, so the source is going to be a constant. And this constant will be implemented as a constant operand that is actually downloaded into the program memory. The way that you signify the immediate addressing is with the pound sign, okay? So you're gonna do pound and then you're gonna put a number after this. You'll see later that you could actually also use, uh, <clears throat> use expressions in here uh, such as labels, but it would put like the hard-coded value of the address in there. But for right now, what we're gonna do is just use address this immediate addressing mode in order to put a constant into some location in memory <clears throat> or, or in a register, okay? So immediate mode addressing is only valid in the source. So now we're finally seeing addressing modes that are not valid in both uh, fields of the move operand. And, and it makes sense, right? You can't move a constant into a constant. It doesn't make sense. You move a constant into a location, all right? So let's do a quick example of this. Uh, that you're going to use this a lot, actually. Um, and what we're going to do is let's just move constants into registers. And well, let's take the opportunity here to also look at putting in different uh, number formats. So you can see, you know, hex, binary, <clears throat> you can see uh, even decimal and even a character. Okay. All right. So that's what we're going to do. All right. So let's fire up Code Composer and let's start a new project. So we see our project explorer over there. I'm gonna do file new, file new, CCS project. And I am going to double check that I'm at the MSP430 FR2355. And then I'm gonna make a new project and I'm gonna call this ASM for assembly and ADDRMOD2 for representing the, this is the second address mode that we were covering. And then I'm gonna do <clears throat> immediate. Okay. And then come down here and do empty, <clears throat> do empty assembly only project. And then I'm going to say finish. All right. Okay. So we have our main.asm that it created for us. And notice that it's blank. And then notice over here we have uh, our project and it's the active one. And so let's come down here and let's just do this. Uh, go ahead and put a main label again and then we'll do our jump main and this implements an infinite loop and again we haven't covered jumps yet but you just got to trust me <laughs> and all we're going to do here is let's just move some information into a register so let's do move 16 bits pound that pound is critical <clears throat> and we're going to do let's just do one two three four hex and let's put that into r4 and our comment would be something like put I mean, this is kind of stupid, but it's like put one, two, three, four hacks into R4. <laughs> All right, let's uh, do very simple. That's it. I mean, that's really it. But let's look at some other formats that we could do. Let's do move W and let's put a hex uh, or let's put 16 bits that we give in terms of hex, but have it start with a letter. So if I wanted to do something like uh, F-A-C-E, that would give a compile error. Okay, so what I have to do is it cannot start with a letter. <clears throat> so you have to come out here and you have to put a zero there. And then it just treats that as, as oh, no big deal. It just ignores that zero. Okay, so we're going to put face hex into R5. All right, let's do, uh, let's do some move.bs. So let's do some 8-bit uh, moves. And that's just, I don't know, what do you want to put in here? Let's do 90, 99h, 99 hex into R6. <clears throat> Put 99x into R6, and let's do move B. We'll do, uh, we'll, let's say we wanted to put something like EE hex. Well, remember, you can't do that. You have to start it with a number, or it'll compile error out. So let's put that into there. So then put uh, EE into R7. Okay, so let's go ahead and compile that and start a debug session. I have my MSP430 plugged in. I'm not gonna see anything happen on it because we're not driving LEDs. So we'll just look in the debugger and watch these values move through. Okay, so let's come down here into our source code and I'm gonna set a breakpoint at the first instruction and I'll go ahead and run to that. <clears throat> and now at this moment, I can come up here into my register viewer 
and I'll look at, I'll notice that R4 has something in it. It's actually from the last program that we ran. If I wanted that flushed out, I could do it. I could press the reset button. But for now, I really don't care because when I run this, when I step my program, look at what happens. One, two, three, four went into R4. Okay. And then our next instruction put FACE into R5. So notice that the source is the value that will go into the destination. In this one, I'm gonna go ahead and run it. Now I want you to look at uh, <clears throat> R6 has 8,000 in it right now. If I do that, <clears throat> it puts in 99 into, into the lower bit and then the upper bit is cleared out. That's fine. And then this one will put uh, EE into R7, okay? All right, great. So let's go ahead and stop that. And then really quickly, let's look at a couple different, uh, couple different number formats. Okay, so I'm gonna come in here. What if I wanted to use a decimal number? Well, the way you do decimal in CCS is you simply put the number and then you don't put H after it. So if I put 371, so I would put 371 into R8. <clears throat> if you don't give it any information, it always interprets it as an integer, okay, in, in decimal format. So that's gonna move the value 371 in there. And we'll look in the debugger at different formats that we can use. Uh, let's do a uh, let's do a binary. So let's do pound for immediate addressing. If I wanted to put eight bits of binary in here, let's go 1010, 1010, and you put a B after it, and then that gives you binary. Okay, so I'm gonna put that turns out to be uh, <clears throat> five five into R9. And let's do one one last one. Uh, what if I put a character? Okay, so I'm gonna put a character, let's put a character B into R10. Now notice that turned blue. What it's gonna do is it's gonna put the 8-bit ASCII code for the letter capital B into R10. And ASCII stands for American Standard Coding for Information Interchange. So this is gonna be put B into R10. And basically what it is is every symbol in the American language is given a, a code, a binary code and all the compilers understand it so they know that when you put that they really mean something some value like we'll we'll see what the assembler or what the debugger says it is okay let's test this really quick so i'm gonna go ahead and fire up another debug session and there it goes it downloads to the board and here we go this time what i want to do is i'm going to come down into my main program let's go ahead and remove that breakpoint from before and we'll just bounce over those past four instructions. Let's put a breakpoint over here by double clicking in front of this, this instruction. And I'll go ahead and run to it. <clears throat> the break happens before the instruction is executed. So uh, I'm interested in what's happening in R8, R9, and R10. So watch what happens here. When I go step 173 went into R8. And you look at that and you go, that's not what I put. I put 371. Remember, these also have a format. So if you want to change the format, click up here, it's defaulted to hex. So I'm gonna change it to decimal, and there's my decimal. And it actually will tell you, the default up here is always hex, and you can tell that by because it says zero X, that means that's another way to specify hex. All right, let's do the next step. And one zero one zero one zero went in there, one zero, and it came in as AA, -A -A, which I knew was AA, but if you didn't know that, you would see it in hex. And so now what I gotta do is I gotta come in here and I gotta change the format to, let's change it to binary. Okay, and look at it. Look at all these bits. So you got a whole bunch of bits going on here <clears throat> and you see the least significant byte has 1010. Okay, good. So finally, let's go and look at our last uh, one. So I'm gonna step over that and 42 came in. So 42 hex turns out to be the ASCII code for capital B. All right, awesome. Let's see what, what other formats we can have in here. Let's see if you can put it in, uh, in what would it be, a string maybe? Yeah, string don't work. <clears throat> I don't know if you can actually do a, uh, let's see, let's see if you can see it here. Um, I don't think there's anything in there. So let's just leave it at, at hex. <laughs> okay, awesome. So there it is. That's how you use immediate addressing. And so just remember, immediate means uh, you, the source is going to be the value itself that is put into the destination. You signify it using the pound sign. It is only valid in 
the source part of the operand. And that is it. Okay, uh, remember, subscribe to my channel so you're always up to date on the latest videos.